Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Talk on Nevada. I'm Andy Matthews, and today we're going to be looking at a topic that is increasingly relevant here in Nevada, and that is the problem of collusion between the government and business. And here to join us and talk about it is Victor Jakes, Deputy Communications Director at the Nevada Policy Research Institute. Victor, good to see you. Thank you, Andy. Good to be here. All right, Victor, you've got a commentary out uh, at NPRI.org this week that gets into exactly uh, that topic. Why don't you just kind of give us an overview of uh, what's got your, your uh, blood up a little bit on this? Absolutely. Uh, well, you know the kind of the traditional um, way politics is described. It's always the liberals want more government and the, the big businesses and the conservatives want limited government. And often that is the case, but they're... Then there's these times when businesses that should be pro-free market or are generally free market want to use the power of government to gain some special advantage for themselves, either through taxpayer subsidies or some kind of zoning restriction or some regulation where they, they, they hurt their competitors to benefit themselves. And that's not a, a, the right use of government. So even if it's coming from a traditional conservative or libertarian business, that's not a proper role of government, and that's something that we as conservatives and libertarians need to say, hey, no, that's not what you should be doing with government. Uh, why now, though? You know, what, what's going on now that's brought your attention to this problem? Yeah, there's a couple of things. The first is the, the Las Vegas City Hall project. As you know, it, it passed last week. Um, and what happens is the city of Las Vegas is going to be building this $185 million city hall, over $300 million with financing. Um, as a private developer is going to be building it, and <laughs> kind of what you you don't know is that the private developer not only is, is building the city hall, but they did a land swap with the city, and so they're getting this land where the city hall used to be to build a casino, and then they're also going to be receiving tens of millions of dollars from the city of Las Vegas in redevelopment money to build that casino. So it's basically just a straight subsidy to this favored business, a, a, an example of the government picking the winners and losers. And then the second instance is with the tax study. Um, and we know what's happening, and we know the tax study by legislative directive is going to look at a tax on a broad base of businesses. Um, so the tax, the IFC, the Interim Finance Committee, has selected these 19 stakeholders for Nevada, which interestingly enough don't include a broad base of business representatives, but they do include mining and casino representatives, which is all well and good, um, except it kind of looks like what they're going to do is they're going to take all the the special interests who depend on government, and then they're going to say, hey, mining and gaming, we won't hit you, or we'll hit you very lightly, if you support a tax on all these other businesses. And so that's the type of, type of collusion that we really need to guard against. I think, um, you know, one question that's worth asking here, and I think you sort of touched on this at the beginning, is that, you know, you're a free market guy, you sort of uh, have this belief or advocate for freedom for businesses, and businesses being able to pursue their own interests, and act in a way that's going to uh, benefit them. You know that businesses ought to be able to do that. Isn't that what's going on here? Aren't these businesses just saying, "Hey, look, this is what's going to be best for our bottom line. We're going to go and, and pursue this. This is going to uh, increase our profits." Um, so, what's the problem? Why shouldn't they be able to do that? Well, there's no doubt that working with the government can increase a business's profit in the short term, but it's not. It's not a proper. Uh, role for a business to go to the government and say, hey, give us a lot of money and we'll create jobs. What a business is supposed to do in the free market is meet consumer demand, meet custom, customer demand, provide a product, a service that's of value to them, and then the customers pay for that. What's happening is that process is being short-circuited because the business is going to the government and saying, hey, give us this money. So they don't have to meet consumer demand anymore. They don't have to provide a product or a service that's worthwhile to earn their money. All of a sudden now they're earning uh, their profits because they can take money from other people. And that's exactly what we as conservatives and libertarians and those on the side of the free market complain about when the government does, uh, does that for other people. They take our taxes and they spend it and they redistribute it in ways we don't like. I mean, it's the same thing when a business does it. Just because it's going to a business that's, that's usually our ally doesn't mean we can support it or be in, any more of a fan of that. Who's really to blame here? I mean, should we really be pointing the finger at the businesses? Is it the government? Is, is there blame to go around, you know, with both? I mean, which of the two sides, if you will, really ought to know better and, and ought to uh, really be the, the target of uh, public anger over this? Well, I mean, I think you have to hold both sides accountable. I mean, obviously, you always have to hold the government accountable because those are the people you elect. They're your representatives. They should know it's not the government's role to pick winners and losers in the marketplace. The government's role is to provide an equal and low tax and regulatory burden that allows businesses to meet consumer demand. But you also have to hold businesses responsible because 
sometimes if a business is, is having a hard time, they, they take a, sh a shortcut. They go to the government and say, hey, why don't you, we'll give you some campaign contributions. We'll support your tax increase on somebody else as long as you give us what we want. And so we really do need to, to kind of let them know, hey, you know what, <laughs> that's not the free market. That's not acceptable. And the thing is, in the long term, it's always going to come back and bite those businesses because the government's never satisfied with one tax increase. They're never satisfied with just hurting that that business because the business that's effective they're affected they're going to say okay we shouldn't be meeting consumer demand anymore we should be going and petitioning to the government and having the government give us the special favors and so you just kind of it just kind of becomes a snowball effect where businesses go to the government and say hey pick us pick us and so in the long run everyone's going to lose all right victor interesting topic stay on it for us and we'll have you back soon for an update we'll do i appreciate it, andy of course i want to thank all of you for tuning in to this week's edition Talk on Nevada. Live by the government, die by the government. That's the title of Victor's commentary on this. Check it out at NPRI.org, and we'll see you next time.